a warm welcome to all the TV education viewers in this video session I am going to derive the expression for input impedance of a transmission line in the previous video sessions I have derived the transmission line equations in terms of the receiver parameters so if we observe or recap the transmission line equations in terms of the receiver parameters they are given by these equations V is equals to Vr cos H gamma into L minus X plus Ir Z naught sin H gamma into L minus X. Okay, next coming to I, I is equals to Ir cos H gamma into L minus X plus Vr by Z naught into sin h gamma into l minus x okay so these are the transmission line equations in terms of receiver parameters now from these two equations i am going to derive the input impedance of the transmission line now what are the conditions to be applied for these two equations to get the input impedance is now as and when say as and when we say input impedance or source impedance it pertains to the ratio of voltage input to current input that is if we observe the schematic of a transmission line now this is the schematic of a transmission line for us okay and here you have got the receiver so vr is the receiver voltage and vs is the source voltage is is the source current and V IR is the receiver current. Now, uh, what is X here? X is a distance between X is the distance between any arbitrary point P on the transmission line. And what is L here? L is the length of the transmission line. That is, it is the distance between the source terminals and the receiver terminals of the transmission line now if i wanted to derive the source conditions so what are source conditions if uh, x is the distance between point p and source and if the if if i am interested in source only then the arbitrary point p comes to source so what might be the distance between source terminals and source terminals once again it is nothing but zero so x takes a value of zero for source parameters okay and uh, coming to uh, the in voltage and current what is the value of v for source voltage it is vs and i is equals to is so what can i do now is uh, i can define the source conditions like this at x equals to 0 v is equals to vs and i is equals to is so let us let me name them as equation number one and equation number two okay now let us substitute these two conditions in equation one and equation two okay so from equation one what happens vs is equals to vs is equals to vr cos h gamma l now h in h gamma into l minus x is becoming simply h gamma l because x is taking a value of 0 for source conditions and what about the next term ir z naught sin h gamma l okay next coming to i i can be replaceable with is so is is equals to ir cos h gamma l plus vr by z naught into sin h gamma l now what would be the source or input impedance basically what is impedance impedance is the ratio of ac voltage to ac current so here i can write z in as i can write z in as obviously vs by is and that is if i simplify this vr cos h gamma l plus ir z naught sin h gamma l divided by divided by ir cos h gamma l plus vr by 
z0 into sin h gamma l. Now, if I slowly simplify this further, then what can be obtained? Now, let us take z0 here. So, z0, if it is LCM, then z0 into vr cos h gamma l plus ir z0 sin h gamma l divided by now due to the lcm the coefficient of this cos h gamma l in the denominator in this expression would be z0 into ir so it is ir z0 cos h gamma l plus vr sin h gamma l okay so now let us simplify this further so if i simplify this further what do i get now uh, let us divide let us divide the numerator expression and the denominator expression with ir okay so if i divide this expression with ir so what is it that that is remaining vr by ir into cos h gamma l plus now this ir gets cancelled here so you are having z0 into sin h gamma l and coming to what is uh, vr by ir i can replace vr by ir with what now uh, v by i basically is impedance z okay and since the voltage and current are pertaining to the receiver terminals i can replace this z v by vr by ir with zr now what is the zr zr is the receiver impedance okay now let us simplify this further so if you observe this expression the uh, now I, what am i doing i am dividing the numerator expression and the denominator expression with ir so now what is it that i am going to get now it is simply zn is equals to z0 into vr by ir into cos h gamma l plus this ir gets cancelled so you are having only z0 so z0 sin h gamma l divided by now this is ir gets cancelled here in the denominator for the first time and so it is simply z0 cos h gamma l plus vr by ir into sin h gamma l so this is the expression for our input impedance now let us simplify this further so <coughs> now here I am replacing this VR by IR with the ZR. So the same expression I can write it as Z0 into ZR cos H gamma L plus Z0 sin H gamma L divided by Z0 cos H gamma L plus ZR sin H gamma L. Okay. Now further if I divide the numerator and denominator with cos h gamma l what do I get z0 into zr plus z0 now if I divide sin with cos we will be getting tan so z0 tan h gamma l divided by z0 plus zr tan h gamma l okay so this is the expression for input impedance in terms of z0 zr and gamma okay now this is the yeah, let us call this equation as equation number yeah this is equation number one and equation number two so equation number uh, i'm sorry this is equation number one we take okay so this is equation number one so equation number two is the generalized expression for the input impedance in if for, for the case of a lossy transmission line that means why it is lossy because gamma is alpha plus j beta and what is alpha here alpha is the attenuation constant and beta is the phase shift constant so when we are considering gamma as alpha plus j beta alpha is not zero so obviously alpha plus j beta if i am taking as gamma and if alpha not equal to zero it corresponds to a lossy transmission line so the expressions one and two are the input impedance expressions for the case of a lossy transmission line now let us derive 
the same expression for the input impedance of a transmission line for the case of a lossless transmission line. Now, when I am saying lossless, so the, it implies there is no attenuation or in other words I can say if there is no attenuation obviously the attenuation constant is 0 that means alpha is equals to 0 is the condition for a lossless transmission line so when alpha when the when the transmission line is lossless since alpha is 0 what happens to gamma gamma is equals to j beta so because alpha is 0 gamma is equals to j beta this is the conditions for a lossless transmission line okay this is the condition for a lossless transmission line now let us substitute that the condition in this equation number 2 okay so now let us uh, start the uh, analysis now what is tan h gamma l by basic definition tan h gamma l is e to the power of gamma l plus e to the power of sorry e to the power of gamma l minus e to the power of minus gamma l by e to the power of gamma l plus e to the power of minus gamma l now, what is gamma here? J beta. So, wherever gamma L is there, I replace it with J beta L. Okay. So, simply this is E power J beta L and E power minus J beta L is E power J beta L and it is E power minus J beta L. Okay. Now, what is E power J beta L minus E power minus J beta L by Euler's formula? Now, if I expand E power J beta L, it is cos beta l plus j sin beta l okay so now let us simplify this further cos beta l plus j sin beta l minus cos beta l minus j sin beta l divided by cos beta l plus j sin beta l plus cos beta l minus j sin beta l. So, if you observe cos beta l and minus cos beta l can get cancelled in the numerator and in the denominator j sin beta l and minus j sin beta l will get cancelled. So, you are having what in the numerator then j sin beta l minus of minus is plus. So, j sin beta l plus j sin beta l is 2j sin beta l and in the denominator it is 2 cos beta l. So, it is simply 2j sin beta l by 2 cos beta l and if you observe what is sin by cos it is tan. So, it is simply j tan beta l. So, what is this actually tan h gamma l ok. So, tan h gamma l for the case of a lossless transmission line is j tan beta l. So, simply substitute wherever tan h gamma l in this expression with j tan beta l. So, from this expression I can write z input is simply z naught into now z r plus now what is the replacement for tan h gamma l from this equation it is j tan beta l. So, it is simply j z naught tan beta l divided by z naught plus j z r tan beta l. So, this is the final expression for the input impedance of a transmission line in terms of a for a in case of a lossless transmission line. So, equation number 1 and 2 are the general expressions for calculating the input impedance of a transmission line in case of a lossless lossy transmission line and coming to equation number 3 equation number 3 is used for determining the input impedance of a lossless transmission line thank you for watching this video and if you feel you have any queries you please mention your comments in the comment box thank you for watching if you feel that it is informative please subscribe to our channel rec tv education thank you